Hello again and welcome back to another one and a lot has happened over the last few hours as Eminem opened the VMAs with a performance of Houdini and Somebody Save Me that led to a couple of viral moments and today we have more on this from Houdini's wins at the VMAs polarizing reactions so far and also LL Cool J's take from the VMAs on working with Eminem on Murder Gram Do, a song that's now the number one hip hop song on iTunes in the United States and number 11 all genres in the United States and we even got a reaction from Big Daddy Kane more on this momentarily today we also have more from Joe Budden about an updated reason on why Jay-Z may have issues with Drake and Lil Wayne and how this could have affected the decision to go with Kendrick Lamar over Lil Wayne and on this note if you recall Nicki Minaj put Jay-Z on blast like we covered and we got Stephen A. Smith fire back at Nicki Minaj for dragging Jay-Z that sparked some wild speculations as we even got clips from DMX calling out Jay-Z that's made a comeback. And on this note, if you recall, we reported academics break down how Jay-Z used black artists to promote title before he pulled off the bait and switch and sold it to Jack Dorsey. Well, Nicki Minaj corroborated X claims about Jay-Z snaking the artist. It is wild out here. And before we dive into Kendrick Lamar's latest industry diss track, that included jabs at Drake and also academics and also a reaction from Drake's associate to the song. If you enjoy content like this, don't forget to tap that like button. The water that sustains this channel. And this meme sets the tone of what's going on right now on social media. Yeah. Let's go. Boom! Off the block. Damn. And starting with Kendrick Lamar, here are some highlights from the latest song he dropped on IG that's pretty much an industry diss track. Drake got a bit of spanking when he rapped. Just walk that man down. That will do everyone a solid. It is love but tough love sometimes got a result in violence and even academics seemingly caught some strays influencers talk down because i'm not with the basic ish but they don't hate me they hate the man that i represent the type of man that never not ride because i want a favor and on this note we got more the radio personality pushing propaganda for salary let me know when they turn up as a casualty i want agony and clearly kendrick is calling out all the quote frauds in rap and not just Drake, as he also rapped, would trade all of y'all for nip, I can't be proud of you dudes. And Drake's associate, Baka, reacted to Kendrick with trash emoji. And this was low hanging fruit, knowing what we know. As this went viral on Twitter, Baka got a weird case, why is he around? And academics wasted no time, first he cried on IG in response to the drop. <laughs> And he believes this is Kendrick's way of distracting the public from the Super Bowl criticism and drama. In fact, Ak believes Kendrick is moving just like Jay-Z when Jay-Z swooped in to get the NFL deal when black people were boycotting the NFL. Check out a snippet from his live stream. The plight that Kendrick seems to be fighting is now clearly aimed at people who he thinks are frauds. It's all about Drake, you're a fraud. A lot of the industry, they're frauds called out media personalities he said radio some people say he's talking to me but i've never done radio but it's okay i'll probably even inherit it what i will say is this let me explain very eloquently why i think this was a misstep by kendrick lamar and here's the thing i've given him enough credit this was a misstep for me we've seen a different kendrick lamar this this year this is a kendrick lamar who whether you want to admit it or not this is a kendrick lamar who's moving off of self-admitted hatred you could possibly say maybe some jealousy someone who is not maybe as righteous as maybe you think to me this was further proof he comes under fire less than three days for being announced as the, as the super bowl halftime headliner by the nfl slash rock nation jay-z and rather let people in their narratives or whatever their criticisms is net wasn't even really aimed at him rather than let those lie he chose to drop another song baiting or getting at the same people this gave me some jay-z vibes we expect you to have really high standards yo mr lamar the, the battle with you and drake is done you look a little bit like a fraud because the same kendrick who built an entire career up to this year on we're standing for the plight the plight of black and brown people you got announced as a headliner 
by an institution that has been heavily criticized for disrespecting the voice of said black and brown people, the NFL. We don't forget, and we didn't forget, that it was only a couple years ago that Nicks wasn't rocking with the NFL. How do you, Mr. Self-Righteous, I call you hip hop Jesus, cause that's how people look at you. A few years ago, Kendrick Lamar, Colin Kaepernick, you were the same nigga who were basically saying, yo, check this out. I stand with Colin Kaepernick. That was you, that was you. <laughs> you stood with Colin Kaepernick. However, other fans have hit back at Ak with, I think I kinda get what he was trying to say, but his point kinda falls on its face. You listen to any Kendrick album, and the man has self-admitted to be effed up and a hypocrite multiple times. Cap himself, to this day, wants to come back as well. No rapper stood tall on the NFL, and some believe things are much better now, so Ak is just yapping. And look what his boycott has done for hip-hop. I know, they throw in a pop or Latino type halftime, but all the best halftimes have R&B slash hip-hop, more black quarterbacks, etc. Maul's lie about Aubrey turning them down is a lie. Do you think Lucian would have let him? But apart from insinuating that Kendrick is just as fraudulent as Jay-Z, Ak also believes people have legit reasons to dislike what Kendrick currently represents as he made these comments on the live stream. I think there's a lot of people that resent Kendrick because they feel like he, he signifies and represents hatred, jealousy, and a liar. I'm going to be honest with you. If I think about why he got into a battle with, with Drake, it appears that he was jealous. If I think about the most popular allegations that were thrown around at Liberty and thrown around frequently, he lied. <laughs> so again, if, if those are what he represents, yeah, people don't fuck with that. But what are your thoughts? And we got Nicki Minaj corroborating claims that Act made about Jay-Z using black artists to increase the value of Tidal, only to turn around and sell to Jack Dorsey, as in response to Axe's breakdown. He had all of them signing their ownership stake. Not one of them owned more than 1%. <laughs> Slime them out again, man. Jay-Z owned the majority stock, but act like, yo, we all own this shit. Everybody was signing on for 1%, okay? Do y'all know as soon as that shit got worth five times what he bought it for, that nigga sold it to a white man and got the fuck out of there. Nicki Minaj reacted to this comment and everybody who had the 1.5% got paid, to which Nicki fired back with, I didn't even get one red penny when no one promoted it more than me outside of Beyonce, lol. Chai, chai, there is God. <laughs> And users are pulling up headlines to support the claims that only Jay-Z made bank. Kanye left Tidal for this same reason. As headlines show, Kanye West splits with Tidal, says company owes him $3 million. However, Stephen A. Smith wasn't happy about Nicki Minaj going at Jay-Z as he put her on blast on the Stephen A. Smith show. Check out some snippets. Come on, Nicki. I respect you. Who else you gonna get in the beef with? Little Kim, Mariah Carey, Cardi B, Gucci Mane. I'm just looking at all of this stuff. Taylor Swift. Every time we turn around, Demi Lovato. Every time we turn around, it's something, Nikki. You disagree with the decision, you disagree with the decision. You got to talk about the brother like that? And why are we talking about Jay-Z like he's some damn sellout or something? Need I remind y'all? All the hip hop artists, all the R&B people that have been performing at, at the Super Bowl halftime over the last few years since he's been involved since 2019. You know how hard it is for a black man to pull off what Jay-Z has pulled off in terms of making sure that black folks get that kind of center stage to promote their brand and build their profile? How unappreciative can you be? It ain't about you as an individual, it's about us, all of us as black people and that brother right there jay-z has been front and center and pushing an envelope you don't call him a sellout he ain't perfect none of us are but he don't deserve that however Nicki minaj fans believe something's off 
Why is it every time Nikki speaks on something, here come MFs from completely different professions, gotta act like they have to stop what they usually talk about and say something about Nikki, so infuriating how she can't say a damn thing, but everybody else can. And if you recall, Nicki Minaj made some wild claims when she was ranting that media personalities are gonna be receiving wads of cash to speak about this situation, and some have expanded in response to Stephen A. Smith's video. DMX said it best, Jay-Z scared of competitors, he act like he on Jay-Z payroll. Let's talk about the career, let's go back a little bit now. You sold millions and millions and millions of yeah. records, and then all of a sudden you slowed down. It just seemed like you just stopped. What made DMX stop recording and... <laughs> uh, and we being truthful because we want to know we haven't yeah, heard from X in I mean, a long my, time y'all know the story already you know what I'm saying he used to be my dog you was in my left titty you know screen right or die I thought you would die with me you know what happened was you know like I said I had the crazy track record of Def Jam everything was good I go to do the sixth album and you know Jay-Z became president over. Yeah, yeah 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 when he first got the job he hit me with the call like yo dog inmates is running the building like yo you good finish the album shoot the video what happened? Mm -hmm. Let's go on vacation and, you know, uh, we don't know. What do you mean you don't know? Mm -hmm. How do you, how do you, listen to a whole album, mm -hmm. pick a single, shoot a video, then don't know? Mm -hmm. mm, okay, I see what's really good. You're trying to eliminate the competition. Mm -hmm. You know, because at first you retire, mm -hmm. you know, you know, then get me off the label. Now you're back rapping again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we got to hear from rapper Fabulous on this drama, as he believes people should stop blaming Jay-Z and he's not solely responsible. Check out a snippet. But I do see like people blaming it like solely on Jay-Z, when I don't think that's the truth. I think um, it's a committee, it's a board. I feel like it's different people who come into play when decisions like that are, ha are made. Uh, I do think it would have been great for Lil Wayne to be, um, you know, just because of how much he's done in the game and how much he's meant to New Orleans and, you know, that would have been a, a great opportunity. Never know if he's going to be included, if that was something that was behind the scenes. I think it was inter interesting that Kendrick got it after the, the Drake battle and shit too. I think that's more something that should be talked about you know i think his his relevance is really up from that so that could be something that took the scale too and boy joe budden spilled some tea that gave an update on why drake and lil wayne look to be on jay-z's bad side at the moment check out a snippet from the joe budden podcast he was just like you know a lot of these whole pow pals come from drake you worked on the beyonce house album and then you did and then a house you went album. And did a house album and dropped it right before hers. And they ain't like that. Hmm. Like, I wouldn't like that if I'm them. I, I wouldn't. Because like you got to understand, we're dealing with the power part of money, power, respect. Mm -hmm. That's the part that we have to focus on. People with power are going to exert it now. Like, when this much is at, at play. So, yeah, I don't think they like that shit. I don't know what's behind it, but they ain't like that move, that little house album. After you worked on my shit? Hell no. Oh, I also got a little bit of tea. Mm -hmm. Oh. What's it? Spill it. Come on now. Eh. Eh. It's hot tea. Oh, we're ready. I'm sure you, you got You got the straw? You, you, yeah. The straw? yeah. You put a little more water in it. You can water down the tea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aqua time. <laughs> I mean, Cam and them kind of alluded to there being some behind this, something behind the scenes at play between the parties involved. And I don't know if I got the same tea as him. But I'm hearing that there was an event where something happened backstage that, yeah. Between whom? I can't, I can't say. Yeah. I can't say because the tea is too hot. But so something cool. happened backstage at one of them shows. It's the hottest of teas. It's oh, the, okay. It's okay. the hottest okay. of, of You can't cool of, it down. It's the scorching, no, right? It's, these things are at play. Like, Can you say what, not who, but what happened? Was there argument, a disagreement? There was something that went on backstage that would affect the decision making and makers of yeah. events like this. And it just contributes to the reputation that Wayne has for being inconsistent. 
I don't yes, know if he maybe. has that. I don't know if he has that reputation. Well, I mean, we were we just what you just read talking about the fact he didn't show up to any rehearsals, the fact that they well, that's can't, one person's account. Yeah. I don't want to make yeah, that broad yeah, stroke. That's, that's one I person's account. I mean, but that's account. but the Grammys is a really big deal. So the fact that we're talking about the Super Bowl, we're talking about big stages, and if you have you know even the smallest reputation of being inconsistent, where people aren't going to know how you're going to show up if you're going to the show up. The music business is very small, and at yeah. this level, it is tiny. Yes. Mm-hmm. These mega, mega, huge corporate they talk. events, yes. they talk. this is a very fucking small circle. Mm-hmm. So yes. if any type of reputation is out there, it ain't going to blow well for you. Right. And I want to preface this. I want to preface everything I say with, I'm upset that we announce a black hip-hop halftime performer, mm-hmm. and we just muddy the water with who we think should have been, yeah, or who nice. y'all think should have been, the black performers. So this would suggest more went into selecting Kendrick Lamar over Lil Wayne more than just a business decision. And this sums it up nicely. Basically, Jay-Z and Beyonce didn't like how Wayne showed up late and performed high as F at the Renaissance tour, which is why they thought he would be a liability if he performed at the Super Bowl. Joe is basically saying the industry is small and once you get labeled as a person who is always late and difficult to work with, corporations will steer clear from you. So is this Joe Budden doing damage control for Jay-Z and Kendrick? What are your thoughts? And apparently, more from Kendrick is on the way, according to Kendrick's childhood friend, who posted this on X. That's just a teaser. Watch the next ish. And moving on, before LL Cool J's performance at the VMAs, he briefly spoke about Murder Gram Do. Uh, yo, we just had a ball, man, going back and forth. I would write my rhymes, go in the studio, write my rhymes, go in the booth, leave. He would go in, write his rhymes, go in the booth, leave. We went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And we did it in like, you know, a couple of hours or something. And um, maybe an hour or so. And it was crazy, you know what I'm saying? I am a kid raised on hip hop. This is legendary. And we got to hear from Big Daddy Kane about the music video seen as Eminem recreate his classic album cover in the video. A. Thank you Eminem for the love. This new LL Cool J project is phenomenal. All my drinkers, let's talk about that M line. Crack a bottle, cause this is E and J. I'm talking me and James. And Eminem made history at the VMAs as Houdini left with two awards, best visual effects winner and also best hip-hop winner. And some political pundits remain salty about Eminem with takes like, Eminem was really falling off what happened to him. This is clearly coming from someone who thought Candace Owens was spitting some facts when she was talking about Eminem weeks ago rather than embarrassing herself. And school was in session. I think he just dropped one of the most successful albums of the year. Maybe they don't listen to him in your third world country. That performance sparked takes like this from those who knew better. Circling back to this Eminem performance from last night at the VMAs, how many artists of his age are putting this much effort into their rollouts, into their performances? There's a reason why he's still one of the biggest artists on the planet. You don't have to like Eminem's politics, but acting like he's not got historic longevity in hip-hop is crazy. In fact, straight up delusional, but political grifters got a grip. And with those wins, Eminem makes history at the VMAs as he's the most awarded male artist of all time at the VMAs. That will be all for today and I'll be looking forward to your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one.